Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Fallen London. Today we're going to be carrying on with the exceptional story of the bloody wallpaper. And the first thing I'm going to do is check my etiquette guide to see the things that we have to do. We need to return four more weasels to the Countess. I'm surprised we haven't found more of these weasels. We need to serve a plated dish to the Parliamentarian in room 777. We need to deliver an impeccably ironed assortment of spotless laundry to the prince in the red suite. And we need to use a bucket of cleaning supplies in the same suite. So let's go, I want to say to the top floor, all the way upstairs, the loftiest suites, the red suite. Let's see what we can do in here. We can assist the prince with his wardrobe. My valet is indisposed indefinitely, I'm afraid. But you look capable. Let's, uh, let's start with that. The prince rambles away while you help with his clothes. He knows so much, and he can tell you everything, because you don't matter. There's another beheading scheduled for tomorrow night. The Earl of Skulls has already swapped his head. What else do they expect? He has enough decoys stashed around to play this silly game until doomsday. The Queen's Grudge, oh let it alone. Could you bear that title? The Grudge? It leaves a bad taste in the mouth, but not as bad as The Grudge. Meanwhile, the Vermilion Twins are conspiring to kill each other again. They do it every Equinox, but this time they've hired their father. That should make the funerals more amusing. Oh dear, are there new stains? Am I going to have to go and... Oh, I'm going to have to go clean his laundry again? <laughs> this man. I swear. While well, we're here, though, let's start cleaning the room. Where to begin? The carpets? Curtains? Ceilings? Concord Square would have a field day in here. So would the doctors at St. Nathaniel's. We politely avoid perceiving any evidence and get to work. Typically, before embarking on such a deep clean, the staff would wait for a guest to leave the room. But these are exceptional circumstances. The prince wants everything done while he's watching to make sure that no precious bits are removed. Don't forget the bathtub, he says. You'll never forget the bathtub. You can flush all the pulp down the pipes. Oh dear. So, in order for us to wash those, that laundry, we need to go all the way down again and speak to the scrub-a-dub-dub. -dub. Let's drop off a bundle of dirty laundry. You won't have to do the washing yourself. A pack of urchins is struggling to carry an enormous hamper. It must weigh as much as a hog. Can't they divide the clothes? Split everything into smaller loads? Oh, probably not. The hamper is straining from something inside. Whatever is in there is trying to open the lid, but it can't break the iron bands. Make way, make way, for the Duke's under things, calls the foremost urchin. All the other servants press themselves against the walls, give a wide berth. Back up we go. The Red Suite once more. Let's assist the Prince with his wardrobe again. Some stains do insist, don't they? Like people without good breeding. I'd rather be on the Red Riviera. There's a massacre in the cards. Picture high tide. But one must fulfill one's filial obligations. And Mother expects me to collect the debt. As though she doesn't have an grand inquisitors and colonels of man-eating barristers. She could send them, but she sends me. You know what that signifies. Either she doesn't care, and this is now my inconvenience, or she cares. His skin is white from all the powder, but not for long. Blood oozes through from underneath. His clothes are soaked again. What did I say? Insistent stains. More dirty laundry, huh? Okay, well, back down we go, all the way down. Drop off the laundry once again. 
Should the water in these sinks be so dark? Not a philosopher versed in the arcane science of laundry, but it looks dirty. Heads turn, workers gasp, an enraged maid has to be restrained. You are green, aren't you? Asked the lobster-skinned washerwoman. Probably pay no attention to the servants most days. They're invisible, eh? But now that you've graced the downstairs with your aesthetic presence, you have remarks. Back up we go. Oh, while we're here, we can actually pick up the, uh, the food for the parliamentarian. Really? They're serving this to the guests? You're serving it, says the creature. Slam goes the door. The dumb waiter drops. Let's con oh, we can continue cleaning the room, hey? Oh, we didn't. Oh no, my urge is too high. I need to lower that. I need to go back downstairs again. Oh no. Well, let's continue cleaning the room. It's time to bring out the heavy chemicals. Where does the hotel get these chemicals? A private contract with FF Gerbrandt? You certainly can't buy them in the shops. One whiff alone could open wounds. They can also dissolve guilt, restore reputations like polish given to old wood, and eat rust. Exposure should be limited to one hour per month for anyone handling them. The active ingredients, inevitably absorbed via contact or respiration, are known to accumulate in spinal fluid. But the staff still goes through gallons weekly. They're not strong enough. Some stains are too deep. Management will have to burn this table. It might also be wise to burn the chairs. Ding, ding, ding. That's the bell at the front desk. You can hear it from anywhere in the hotel. Some harmonic property of the walls. More guests have arrived. Let's go and answer the bell, I guess. Oh no, we need to fix our urge. Let's fix our urge first. All the way down. Let's speak to the butcher boy first. To remove our vapours. And then let's talk to the... Uh, the spider. To stitch that smile. Lovely. We can greet the brass embassy ladies. Hell's own cricket team. They're scheduled to embarrass Benthic again next week. Look at this one. Where do they find these flunkies? Asks the short leg. The bottom of the bin, replies the wicked keeper. Can't you smell? Ladies manners, says the team captain. Remember slow cakes. But she still holds a handkerchief to her nose. If this is who's working for the red and gold pageant, I'm glad we got paid in advance for the boilers. There's the gully. Management must be low on funds again. Who else does the Beth still owe? Asks Shortleg. It'll be a lark to learn, says the team captain. But now, drinks. Wait, does that mean they're in the bar? Do we check on the ladies? They're sipping something potent. You can smell it from a distance. Their lips are stained a deep red from the pomegranate's blood. Is that pure? Grenadine, and a triple distillation. A seasonal label served exclusively at this bar, says the team captain. Most humans can't keep it down, but the sweetness sparkles on the tongue. Isn't that right, ladies? It has sweetened their tongues. Their insults are more veiled. Okay, back up to the top floor. To the red suite. Does it still need more cleaning? It does. Let's just quickly pop into the, the broom closet to get some supplies here. Oh my god, my nightmares is at 13. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I couldn't possibly understand why this place is lovely. Let's finish assisting the prince with his wardrobe. You've been such a good sport about all this. My valet was weak. Already his clothes are stained. Again. Wet fabric sticks to his skin. But his clothes, despite their profound redness are nothing compared to his eyes. Bloodshot, every vessel broken. He has no whites, and his lashes glitter with ruby clots. Carmine fluid oozes down his cheeks. All his pores are craters that produce more dye. 
It's the kind that would turn brown without refreshment, but this dye is endlessly refreshed. He adjusts his cuffs, observing himself in the mirror. Yes, that's better, isn't it? Innocence can be so stubborn to get out, contrary to popular belief. But you've managed it beautifully. Here, you deserve a tip. Ah, we gained a magnificent diamond. What a lovely man. We always appreciate tips. Right, and we can carry on cleaning the room. You've saved the worst for last. The bed. It's difficult to peel the pillows apart. The sheets want speculums, and the canopy might benefit from an exorcism. But the ordained chambermaid can arrange that later. Right now, the mattress is the sticking point. About halfway through the ordeal, you realise the other party in the room might have been two or three other parties. You keep finding little things. Buttons, gold teeth, earrings. The goose down has absorbed so much, you fill bucket after bucket. Everything is still red when you're done, and much is still wet. But that's normal for the red sweet. We got a pair of scarlet stockings of dubious origin, and even more diamonds. Okay, so what is left in our guide here? Oh, visit the butcher boy downstairs to cure the vapors. Return four more weasels. I don't know where these weasels could possibly be. Let's deliver the food to the parliamentarian, shall we? I believe she's also on this floor. Room 777. We can't wait to taste what the kitchen prepares. Don't make us. As requested, it's a small dish. Whether it's weak or not, only the Procurer General can comment. He pounces and swallows it whole. A restless horror licks the plate for crumbs. There are none. That might have been too much for the first course, says the Parliamentarian. Not that I'm complaining, the kitchen is never stingy. It just served us a great hunger. I'm going to take advantage. This room's rental includes complimentary meals, all we can eat for free. Why doesn't someone else order for us next? The lamb leans close to whisper. Very close. Oh dear, we've gained unaccountably peckish. We have gained another order for the kitchen, so let's go back down again. Maybe I should use the stairs. Let's, use, let's see if we can use the stairs. Maybe we'll find a, a ferret. Shrieks echo up the stairwell. The guests on this next floor must be displeased. Have they tried complaining to the manager? Sometimes that works if there's money involved. And if they can part with a diamond or two, well then, that might purchase some care. Hmm. Where are we here? The rattling door? The ink splattered chamber. Oh, let's go to the ink splattered chamber. Let's work our way down. The guest in this room is better behaved than the others. He gets to keep his own key. Sometimes he even takes strolls around the garden. But he can make such a mess when he's not properly dosed with laudanum. He hasn't been dosed today. Let's wait upon the fidgeting writer. I'd rather not take any more laudanum, if you don't mind. I'm dreaming again. I haven't had dreams like these in years. They're so strong, so vibrant. They feel real. I had to try writing them down, but it's been ages since I've held a pen. You can tell. And eye coordination must be atrocious. How did he get so much ink on the walls? In fact, how did he get a pen? They're not allowed in the Vale's wing. One of the other writers has a sister who smuggles them in. We're all writers here. I don't let the manager know. I promise I won't spill more ink. If I had a typewriter, that would be better. Cleaner. Is, is that against the rules? We have a request for an item in storage. Okay. Let's eye at the keyhole. Something is definitely watching. They're never going to blink. A guest behind the door. And guests have needs. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm watching the world. You have to watch the world if you're going to write anything half decent. You have to watch people. You have to look right into them. 
especially when they don't want you to look. That's how you learn their secrets. I've seen so many, enough to fill novels and poems and plays. They're all here in my head, masterpieces. One day I'll jot them down, perhaps tomorrow, but not now. I have too many things to do today. Okay, the eye still hasn't blinked. Lovely. What about the rattling door? Someone doesn't want to stay inside. They're begging for you to open the door. But you don't have the key to this room. Management will never let you have it. We can wait upon the long-standing tenant. Liberty isn't an option, but perhaps you can fetch something else. Judging by the whales, they don't have any further requests. You can't please everyone. Okay. Is there anything special in the broom closet here? Ah. Investigate the a rumbling sound. It's coming from the hideous umbrella stand. It leaps out of the elephant's leg and latches onto your face. You topple back, grappling with the weasel. Umbrellas tumble everywhere. Why is an elephant's leg in here? What compelled anyone to fashion an elephant's leg? into an umbrella stand. It's gigantic. How many umbrellas do people own? The weasel hangs its head. Rightly so. Wonderful. We found another weasel. Right, let's uh, take the stairs. Its head downstairs. Your stomach grumbles as you descend the stairs. When was the last time you ate anything? Why are you suddenly thinking about food? Rip out these base appetites. Gobble them down for sustenance. Other people can afford to be peckish, but you're too busy tonight. Okay, so one of these floors doesn't have an elevator on it. Interesting. Um, should we deliver the weasels while we're here? Sally Ann, my dear sister, return to the bosom of your dear sister. We're not really sisters, the Countess confides, whispering behind her hand so the weasel can't read her lips. She's married to my brother's wife, and she becomes terribly cross when we point out that she's not a blood relation. She's vicious when she's cross. You'd never believe the things she did to Martin and Peace Pudding. Martin and Peace Pudding are also weasels. They cower at Sally Ann's approach, slinking into a handbag. It's a handbag made from skinned weasels. That's two fugitives. Where are the other three? Well, I still have one more here for you. Oh no, I need to fix my urge. Let's take a step downstairs. Also fixed my vapors while I was down here. Let's just check through these, just in case there's any more weasels down here. Oh, we do have an order for the kitchen, though. Another one. Expletives. Nobody important knows that the Carganian Pastier works here. Except management, obviously. She's in hiding from the Tymon clan. Bad blood involving a creme brulee. After an impromptu exodus in a tramp steamer's funnel, you couldn't get the right stamp supplied to the right papers. But the manager won't tell anyone. She won't give him a reason to tell. Will she? I'm hoping that these boilers aren't about to explode. <laughs> Return another weasel to the Countess. How absolutely fabulous. It's Dr. Henry Mutton Chops again. One can never have too many doctors. Specialists exist for a reason, you know. They can't all be experts on every ailment. Dr. Henry Mutton Chops, for instance, accomplished brain surgeon. And Dr. Henry Mutton Chops has perfected leech therapy for constipation. To think that I purchased them from a pet shop, one pays ten times the price in London for some tomb colonist with a bone saw to lance a carbuncle. Badly. The doctors must disagree on a diagnosis. They're drawing blood. Well, two of my furs are still out there. I still have one more to give her. I do. Lucifer, at long last, my esteemed solicitor, no other kills as quickly. The other weasels scramble away when Lucifer enters the room. Hundreds of furry bodies scamper under the bed, 
into the water closet and behind the countess for protection. Candles gutter, dogs howl in the street, beetles turn over and promptly die. My most trusted advisor, she says, reaching to pet the solicitor. It bears foam-flecked fangs as she jerks back her hand. Never mind, Lucifer's moody. Deliver the last fugitive. Okay, so we need to find one more. Ah, we need to consult the nearest clock. Do you have time to greet the guests yourself? Technically, you can wait to answer the bell. Oh, we'll go and answer the bell. We can greet the struggling artist. What? I got this freeloader for the royal birth. And with the Garlow rates. What did he take this time? Laudanum? Honey? Red honey? He battles to sign the guest book. His eyes are glazed. He can't walk without help. But he has plenty. The lady in the salmon kimono must be his current patron. She's incredibly tall and thin. She folds herself down to whisper in his ear. Her forked tongue flickers. Room 13, sighs the artist dreamily. I'm so lucky. His patron has a retinue. Blade courtiers, camels in lederhosen, jesters, astrologers, perfumed hummingbirds, ten identical emperors, and tomatoes armed to the teeth. Two hummingbirds carry the artist by his shoulders. Everyone squeezes into the lift. Wait, room 13? That is not. The Beth skips that number. Wouldn't want the bad luck. Okay, well... Let's go... Deliver the food to the Northern Parliamentarian, I suppose? She was on the upstairs floor? Ah, she was on the top floor. Oh, I didn't pick up the food. Damn and bless. Receive the plated dish. There must be a mistake. This food is trying to crawl off the plate. The creature produces a mallet and smacks it. Good now? Asks the creature. Actually, that's much better. My friends and I are more famished than ever. The pangs will start soon. The lamb is sweet. Hence the name. Sweet as a little lamb. Not dessert again, whines the Procurer General. It's always dessert when the lamb gets to pick. There's powdered sugar in the air. Confections, molasses, enough to choke the bloated diplomat. The lamb prances, splintering china, cracking ribs and gouging cherries from frosted sockets. The Procurer General guzzles syrup, grimacing dramatically. But the Parliamentarian doesn't eat, and the others settle for scraps. The lamb can be territorial. These courses are too predictable, says the producer general. Tell the kitchen we want a surprise, with one condition, he stipulates. Okay, we have another order for the kitchen. All the way downstairs again. I'm hoping we just magically find the, the uh, weasel. I'm thinking it might be in storage. Because we do have a reason to go there again. Withstand an expletive, peppered beratement. So many spicy words, it's no wonder the dishes have excellent flavour. We're not bloody devils down here. The oven's too hot. The ovens aren't hot enough. What's wrong with the temperatures in the hotel? Half the chefs have heat stroke, half are frostbitten. It's the damn boilers again, says the mummified sorcier. How many times does this have to happen? Management never fixes anything. Okay, before you can deliver another order for the kitchen, you'll have to tame the boilers. If you ring the bell for the manager at the front desk, he might have advice for dealing with this little setback. It's apparently a long-standing problem. Lovely. Well, while we're here, we might as well get stitched up. Oh, we can't. Okay. Well, let's go to the front desk. I'm guessing we're going all the way down here. But, uh, lobby. Ring the bell. Ring the manager's bell. Let's ask about the boilers. There seems to be a problem with the temperature. Ah yes, always the boilers. Uh, we need sufficient energy. 
It cannot come from simply anywhere. Like a rat pulled from a magician's hat. You know what a luxury hotel consumes? How to meet its demands when its demands are never-ending? From a brass buttoned pocket, he excavates a ring, clinking with keys. Some are fresh cut, others ancient, rust eaten, encrusted with jewels, encrusted with blood, carved from the bones of desecrated saints, forged from every metal, ringing like tentacles or obediently inert. The manager sorts through them all, whistling merrily. For the boiler room, he says, when he finds the right one. We have a lease, but the brass embassy can forget. Be a sweetheart and remind them, will you? Okay, well, how bad can it be? All the way down. The Pentecost attendant looks anxious. You, you really mean that? The attendant doesn't speak. The lift rattles and plunges into the hotel's foundations. You aren't always descending vertically. In their underground halls, the brass embassy entertains visiting diplomats. Most only see the upper galleries, but the embassy extends to the sweltering depths, where the living rock sweats and the heat could roast bones. The devils have built their boiler room. The royal Bethlehem also draws power from it. For a price. For the devils don't stoke the boilers. That's a filthy, unforgiving job. When the lift's golden doors finally open, you step into a pit swarming with imps. Oh dear. Well, I guess I'm just going to talk to them all. Base born Mary. Is that milk? Pray that it's milk. The alternatives send the mind reeling and the stomach lurching. There are so many empty bottles. Pour another bottle to quench the fire. This is milk, isn't it? Sweet, merciful saints, let it be milk. Hey, 90% chance of success. There's no way we could fail. <laughs> I'm not supposed to drink so much, giggles baseborn Mary. But I tiptoed quiet like and got the bottles not to drink, to do this. She uncorks one and douses the flames. They burn blue and green and then white. And then they whisper smouldering secrets. You uncork a bottle yourself. When you pour it, the fire hisses and spits. Mary rolls over, laughing louder, legs kicking into the air. It hates you! Okay. What about Ashley the cat meat thief? Unspeakable things have been done to this pocket handkerchief. Just look at those buttery creases, those oozing, flea-infested folds. The stench hits you even across the room, and it's wearing cologne that does nothing to spare your nostrils. We only have a 60% here, but how bad can it go? Pinch your nose and twist the valve. You can smother the flames if you smother your sense of smell first. Ouch! Too pungent. You barely manage to tighten the valve are fading from the odour. These fumes will cling to you for weeks. Your sinuses bleed, your thoughts curdle and clot, and now it's wiping its face with an abominable rag. The disreputable Aloysius. Its shames are too many to name, its treacheries fill chronicles in hell. It was finally banished to the boiler room after selling insurance in spite for favours, after which even the brass embassy scrubbed its employment history from the books. Now it feeds the fires with wayward mice and curses known only to pawnbrokers of a rare stripe. Let's, uh, let's try it. 50% chance. That was not a good idea. No, that wasn't a good deal at all. What infernal logic did this scheming thing use to trick you? Not a trick, says the imp. That's the trick. Now come here. Mercifully, you remember little. Oh, Todd. Hello there. Are you from the hotel? Let me guess, they're complaining about the temperature again. What a charmed life they're all leading upstairs, I must say. No tolerance for third degree burns or anything. But I'll see what I can do. Someone who speaks common sense. What a very unusual treat. 70% chance. There we go. That should do it. 
at least for a little longer. But we can't always fiddle. The Brass Embassy has specific demands, and this is their equipment. I understand it's useful to have energy from hell, even necessary to attract wealthier guests, but just because we share a boiler room, that doesn't mean the Royal Beth can order us around. The manager ought to count himself lucky that he signed the lease when he did. And finally, Wretched Myrtle. Maybe some imps enjoy eating soot. Wretched Myrtle doesn't, but that isn't stopping her. Fistful after fistful, coughing, gagging, chewing embers from the ash heap with difficulty, making faces that could redefine disgust, reaching for more. Oh, well, let's clear them out. Let the blaze settle, if you can withstand the heat. 70% chance of success. Ouch, we still failed. Wretched Merchel shows you a better technique. The calluses, however, provide an undeniable advantage, particularly the ones on Myrtle's tongue. Is Todd about here somewhere? Hello, Todd. Can you help me again? Okay, and then... Like Todd again? Hi, Todd. I like you, Todd. There we go. We fixed the boilers. Let's get out of here, shall we? We do need to go into the storage, but I am coming up to near the end of the episode, so I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to end it here, and in the next episode we shall look for the final weasel. And also go down to the storage room. But either way, thank you all very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you again to the members. It means the world to me, and it helps me make these videos. We'll see you next time.